Hello, I'm Eric Whitaker and welcome to The Beautiful Mess, Masterclass in Composition and Creativity. There are a lot of creative solutions that don't have an obvious answer. In fact, the search for the solution is the answer in itself. So I started doing the same kind of thing. This is what I call, for lack of a better word, a snake wearing pants. And I make one of these style sheets with every piece that I write. This is for a piece that I wrote called Equus. And what I did with, the, with Equus is I sat down and all I knew was that I loved the title Equus. Equus means horse in Latin. And I wanted to somehow create a piece that, that captured the, the majesty and the mystery and kind of the mythology of horses, the bone, the sinew, the muscle, just somehow turn that into a piece, but I didn't have a note. And I do all of this really before I write a note of music. So I sit down and I first drew this little, this circle, this Death Star Pokeball wheel here in the middle. And I kind of colored it in and, and I gave it this sense of motion. I knew that I wanted it to be a moto perpetuo, a perpetual motion machine, a kind of thing that started and never stopped, kind of like a horse running. And around that, I wrote these words. I wrote strong and delicate, exciting, awe-inspiring, clean, only aspirational words. Just things that I hoped the piece would be and that I hoped the performers and the audience would feel as they listened to it. Again, not even worrying about a note of this. Now, this is just the second half of the piece. So if we go from here to here, that's now what this whole page is, right? And then what we see is we see we're starting with this rumble here and it's going to, here's the plateaus, boom, 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 bigger, bigger, bigger. And then when the, when the, the image is fully in focus, this is the moment that should, should change people's lives. <laughs> then it's going to come down. We're going to have this, this beautiful corral. And now knowing that we're, we're talking about this focus and out of focus idea. I was able to say, as we got more and more specific, that at this moment where it says complete, this is the chorale where the choir sings at the end. This would be the first time in the piece that we hear the theme in focus alone and by itself with nothing else around it. It's the very first time that we hear it. So we knew we we're going to get this moment where we get this climax where the image is in focus, but then our theme, which I haven't, still haven't written a note for yet, is going to be perfectly in focus. All right, so then here you'll see, I start to add a little more specificity in my, in my drawing. So I write at the beginning here, low, muddy, la mer, and la mer like uh, Debussy. And it's not that I wanted it to sound like Debussy, but I wanted it to make me feel the way the beginning of la mer makes me feel, kind of that emotional essence. Uh, then here I wrote bass drum, this dreadful rumble. And that may have been the first note that I wrote and that made it in. There's this bass drum that starts at the beginning of this second part of, of Deep Field and runs for eight full minutes all the way through this, this climax and all the way back. So starting now to just be a little more specific. And then somewhere along this process, I discovered my golden brick. It had all the DNA for the entire piece in it. And I'll show you another example. So this is from Deep Field. Deep Field's golden brick is much bigger and grander. It sounds like this. Now this is another one of these chords that I just played over and over and over again that somehow just hearing it, just listening to it feels like I'm falling into the ocean of its world. And in this case, when I listen very, very closely, what I'm hearing back in there. That's in the chord itself. It's in the way that those notes are, are dancing and playing with each other. And those very notes then, not only do they start the piece, 
but then they become this major theme for the rest of the piece, what I call the longing theme. And what I do to develop that idea then, besides using that over and over in all kinds of different ways, is then I flip it upside down and play. So you've got this, and it's converse. And the third and final kind of word painting that I use a lot is literal. This is my favorite kind because uh, in some ways, the, I feel like the poets, the really good poets, it, it's not really a collaboration. It feels more like they're doing 90% of the heavy lifting and then the music I write to it is just taking the blueprint of everything they've done. As I said earlier, the, the great poetry has the music kind of already bubbling inside of it. And here's a perfect example of that. So in Water Night, Octavio Paz writes, and if you close your eyes, a river, a silent and beautiful current, fills you from within, flows forward, darkens you. Okay, let's just stop for a moment and recognize that it has to be some of the most beautiful poetry in the English language, and it wasn't even written in English. It's a Spanish poem, that's the translation by Muriel Rukeyser. It's, it's stunning how beautiful it is. And when I went to set it, I remember coming upon this line, fills you from within. So how do you paint musically the idea of filling something from within? And so what I did was the, the most simple version of that, again, using our scales. We start with the sopranos up on top. They're on a D flat here. And they split into five parts. Fills you from within. So they build this little five part cluster, right? Then the basses, the tenors, and the altos start all the way down on this low E flat. And this is a register, by the way, that I don't think it's used enough for altos, that, that warm, rich tone down there. So they start this way, and then they build a scale coming up the other way. Fills you from within to here. Now what we do, if you look at it on the page, is we've used every single note between here and here. And literally, I'm just filling the chord from within. That's it. I'm doing exactly what Octavio Paz said to do. Nothing clever. Most recently, I wrote a piece called The Sacred Veil. And The Sacred Veil begins with the lines that Charles Anthony Sevesti wrote, whenever there is birth or death. Now, for me, there's a, a kind of mood that I want to create there. There's a, a world that I want to invite the, the listeners into that is, that's got a kind of sorrow. No, it's different than sorrow. It's more a kind of inevitable dread that this is the way things are going to unfold. And the piece that I know better than any that does that is Radiohead, Everything in Its Right Place. Now, it's not that I took the exact sound. It's my thing, it's completely my sound. And even when I, when I play those chords of the Sacred Veil, it sounds like me, but I used, I used Radiohead in a way to enter that world, to find my own way into that. So let the, the aspiration for the piece, what the piece wants to be, dictate the style. <laughs> 